Welcome to this week's episode of Mastermind Gameplay, where we're going to go through how to build a rover that can go on a rail and off-road. Now this is a basic rover right here. As you can see, it has some small wheel gears on top and 5 meter wheels on the sides. A camera in the back, a small cockpit, and a few other odds and ends. This whole thing is powered by two small nuclear reactors connected to a small cargo container. As you can see, this rover has no problem maneuvering back and forth. It is fairly agile, easy to turn, and with the wide wheels, it allows it not to flip over very easily at all. When you first approach a rail though, you want to get it lined up, but don't forget, don't activate the rail wheels until you're already on there. Otherwise, you may run into an issue like this. The rail wheels actually stick down farther than the 5 meter wheels do, so they lift up the entire body and you lose your traction. To better perform this, I think we should move to a flat surface up here. Make sure we're lined up with the rail itself. And then we'll just simply lower the rail gear. As you can see, it moved us just a little bit and locked us in. Even with an angle, we are able to go up and not fall out of the track. As long as you don't floor it, that is. You give this thing too much throttle, it'll probably pop right out. Currently, I'm not using any steering for this at all. It's just moving back and forth. Essentially, if you have a turn that you put on here, you could also go through the turn. And these wheels will allow you to fit perfectly through the tunnel that we made earlier. As you can see, the automatic door raised. I have adjusted the top speed of this thing, by the way, to 90 kilometers max instead of 180. This prevents us from going too fast where we pop back out of the rail. And there you have it, the door is open, and we have cruised back out. Let's go build another one. I'm going to walk you through the steps on how to construct it and how to adjust all the settings. So first I'm putting a rotor down. I'm going to add a small head to it. Lock the rotor and set the inertia to be the same as the rest of the grid. Then I'm going to add a small piston on top of it. And from this small piston, we're going to extend it all the way up before we start building. And then we start placing the first blocks for the rover. I'm just building a few blocks outward from the rotor. That way we'll have clearance when we try to test out the rail gear and lower them in the future. Then I'm putting six small batteries for the base. They'll initially be what powers this, and then two blocks in the front of those small batteries. It's time for the five meter gear. I'm putting the five meter gear since it takes up two blocks. I'm putting one block portion on the small battery and one block portion on the standard block. It's important to remember that you use the right gear on the right side and left gear on the left side or it may cause problems when you adjust your settings later. Then we're just putting a little control seat here. And this way we can adjust the right wheels before we put the left wheels on. 
For the most part, everything stays the same. You can see the steering, propulsion, braking, air shock, all the same. But I reduced the power down to 25% so it doesn't cause us to do wheelies. With a short chassis, you have a tendency of the front end coming off the ground if you have too much force. The strength is set at 70. The height is going to be negative 0.15 or negative 15 centimeters. And I think that's about it for adjustment besides the friction. We'll put that to 100%. Adjust the speed down to 90. And that should do it. All right, so I'm going to mark these, the aft and forward gear. That way, if we run into an issue where one is running the opposite direction from the other, we'll easily be able to identify them and adjust it. For the left side, we're going to repeat the process. It's important to put your drive gear in first before you try to build the arms that have the real gear on them. Otherwise, the placement might get messed up or you might not have enough room when you build the rail gear. Had to add additional block. The rail gear starts off with a rotor one block above where the main gear are connected. I always make sure that this rotor is at zero degrees before I put it in place. Sometimes it's hard to see because of the light reflection and it is a silver surface. Yeah, that should do it. Then I'm going to put two small blocks while it's in the zero position, aiming downward. Before I add any of the gear though, we're gonna adjust this rotor and rename it to make it easier to identify. I'm just simply marking this on the left side forward end for this rotor because we will have four. Lock the rotor. Set the velocity. I want these to move fairly quick, so I put them at 5 RPM. The rotor displacement is going to be 6 centimeters or 0 0.06. Big thanks goes out to Dutch Games, who provided the tip of holding the control button and left clicking when you're on a scale in order to input the exact number you want. That has become very handy. To adjust these lower limit and upper limit, one is going to be set to zero and the other one is going to set to 220 degrees. You can always adjust the 220 degrees to a different level if you want, but for now I'm going to set it zero to 90 just so we can see its movement and determine which direction is which. On one of the lower settings you're going to have to have it as the negative and on another rotor it'll be a zero vice versa for the upper limits. As you can see, it is going positive forward, which means when it comes back around, it'll be in the correct direction. So we want to set this at 220 for the upper limit and zero for the lower limit. Then once we have it set, I'll set this back to 5 RPM, unlock the rotor, and we'll see it move all the way up. 
If you happen to make an offset of this, like I said, you can readjust the degree angle for your upper limit or your lower limit so it doesn't hit the rest of the chassis. Afterwards, we'll hit the sensor because with the inertia sensor set and we're still connected to the stationary grid, it allows it to stay in place at the zero degree angle. For these wheels, I'm adding two number one meter wheels and then we'll adjust those. First, you want to label them. I label these both as the forward ones. That way later on we won't get confused on which ones we already adjusted. Now for these, I'm taking all the steering propulsion, brake, allow parking brake, and air shock off. We're going to adjust the strength to 70%. The height offset is going to be zero. And I don't think we really need to worry about the rest of this for now. I recommend that you do not put the friction at 100%, otherwise it may inhibit your rover from actually moving. Now for the back rotor and gear setup. This is going to be a repeated process on every corner, but I am still going to show you how I set the rotor just so you'll understand how the angle does change and how you'll have to be mindful of which direction it actually moves. The gear, on the other hand, are going to be the same setting on all four corners. I'm just going to go ahead and set the gear, get it out of the way before I adjust the rotor. Again, everything's unchecked. Strength to 70. Height to zero. And that's it. If you have your strength also at 100%, it may cause you problems in the long run. And again, it might stop the rover from being able to move along the rail. Now for the rotor, this is the left aft rotor. And this should be the exact opposite setting besides the six centimeter of that of the forward rotor. So if you go back to the first rotor, We set it at lower limit of zero and upper limit of 220. So on this rotor, we're going to put it at a negative 220 for the lower limit. Like so. And the upper limit is going to be zero. And then five, of course, for your velocity. Unlock the rotor. And if it doesn't move, don't forget to uncheck shear inertia. And there you have it. The gear completely retracts, but does not hit the main gear. We're just going to reverse this and then lock it back into position before we continue on to the next one. For this rotor, the setting is going to be the opposite of the aft left one, but the exact same as the forward left one. If you think about it, the rotors diagonally from each other are going to be the same equal setting. So rotor right aft is going to be the 
Velocity of five. Oh, better lock that rotor first. Yeah, it started moving on us. That's okay. We'll adjust the lower limit. To negative 220 and the upper limit to zero hmm I think I just put that in backwards Okay, lower limit to zero, and the upper limit to 220, and that should be the correct direction. Yep, we're back in line again. Just testing it one more time to make sure it's not hitting the gear. And there you have it. I almost forgot to relabel these gear. I was in the habit of doing the rail gear first and then the rotor last. But in this case, I did the rotor first and the gear last. 70 on the strength. Height is zero. Friction, uh, I don't need that. And that should be it. In case anything happens, or there's a glitch in the game, I put these back in the downward position. So that way, if there's a corruption or anything, hopefully it'll make our rover fall right into the rail and not just bounce all over the place. You can do this one or the other way. Either put the rotor on, lock the rotor, make adjustments or allow gravity to do the work and simply attach the small gear to the rotor before you adjust everything. I've already made the adjustments to this last rotor and the gear so now we're just going to group them. I'm going to call this the rail gear. And that's about it functionality wise. The last part I'm going to add here is a small cargo container. and the small nuclear reactors. If you're running off of hydrogen power or simply battery power, you could put a large battery in the back of this thing and it'll last quite a while. Or you could potentially extend this chassis out a bit, add a third wheel and throw on an O2 generator and a hydrogen generator. This also goes along with building the body of this. I didn't overly build up the body because I still wanted to fit in this tunnel. But if you have a taller tunnel and say it's on the moon or an asteroid, you could always build an enclosed cockpit instead.
I suppose it just depends on how much space you have available while you're traveling through your tunnel. For mine, I simply put the walls as two blocks up, which seemed to be plenty of space as a service tunnel, but in more functional tunnels, I'll increase its size. This is a very basic design. If you wanted to add more flash or flare to it, you could. On the back here, I'm putting a camera. On the outside, if you're off-road or on a rail that is not in a tunnel, there's really no need for a camera. But when you go into a tunnel, the game likes to change the view on you. And so it makes it a lot easier to have that camera on the back when you're trying to go backwards out of a tunnel again. As this tunnel progresses, and this mountain headquarters continues on, I will eventually put in a turnstile so I will not have to use the camera to back up. Instead, I'll be just turn around and head the other direction. To build in this cockpit somewhat, I am using one by one sloped windows around it and in front of it. This could be a general basis if you had say a hinged top to this. In that case, I would take out maybe the middle windows or one of the end windows in order to add a merge block to seal the entire thing. In that sense, you could make it a pressurized cabin at that point, especially if you already have an O2 H2 generator on board. All right, I think we just need a few finishing touches on the body here and we'll call it good. There is enough space on here where on the front or even on the back, you could add an antenna and a drone or remote. That way, say, if it gets out of hand for you or if you try to use the override for the propulsion and then you inadvertently leave, you could always contact it via remote and reverse your settings and have it come back to you on the rail because it will go in a straight line without having to steer or anything while you're on a rail system.
And for the most part, I think that's about it on here. Maybe add a light to the front. Nothing spectacular. Looks like everything is inputted. We've adjusted all the settings. Hmm, maybe I should add a block or two to the side of these rails afterwards, though. Let's lower ourselves down and see how it fits in the track. By having these 1x1 one one gear set at 0 for height and the rotors all set at 6 centimeters, it gives you a pretty accurate fit and enough friction where it keeps you in line. There may be a better setting for it out there. You could always experiment and test it out. For the rotor set, I'm going to put it at position 1 on the G screen. You could always add the camera to that same screen for a quick access and the lights, of course, or any other thing that you decide to put on this rover. And there we have it, nice smooth transition. These ramps don't really help that much if we were to use half blocks or half slope blocks instead, it would ride a lot smoother because you wouldn't have the seams. But for the most part, it did not jump out of the track, it's in place, and I think the top speed I got on the other one was about 40 kilometers an hour and still had no problems. Going downhill is the same way. There's almost a perfect balance between the front and the back gear and the weight of the front and the back of the chassis. Of course, I probably should get rid of that rotor before we continue off-road. And I'll throw a couple of blocks in here just so it looks better. Overall, this is a pretty simple build, and if you're interested in seeing more of these types of builds, please leave your suggestions in the comments section, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the next episode. Oh, dropped the head there. Okay, let's take this down the ramp and see if it'll go off-road. This is a pretty versatile rover, and it is basic. I intentionally made it basic, so that way people can decide if or what attachments they want to add to it. With all four gear up, we're able to drive backwards, forwards, turn, no problem. And this thing has enough clearance on it where you can easily go up a hill, maybe the side of some rocks. And venture across the landscape without having too many issues. A longer chassis might be more suited for individuals that want to add a medium cargo container along with a connector in order to transport items from off base to on base or onto a rail system, which is completely plausible. Well, as always, thanks for watching. And I hope you leave your tips, tricks, and comments in the comment section below. I appreciate it.